Good morning, everybody. The, uh, in today's gospel, Christ gives us a great promise. He says that he came that we might have joy and that our joy might be complete. And, um, and what, a great, what a great prospect that is. What a great promise. And, and one moral theologian, one spiritual writer, I should say perhaps, uh, was saying that um, God's vocation always comes with a promise of something good. And that's why the pursuit of happiness is at the center of Christian life, that we are, and of course the pursuit of happiness was made famous by Thomas Jefferson in the Declaration of Independence. But that has its roots in um, classical thought, including pagan thought, including uh, Plato, people like Plato, Aristotle, and Cicero. All of these guys agreed with Revelation. They all agreed with the Bible that the, the center of our moral life, the way in which we construct our life, is to pursue our own happiness. So there's a, a selfishness that's kind of legitimate. And Christ here says that there's a selfishness that's legitimate in our pursuit of joy. That we are, after all, pursuing something that's good for us, that's going to please us, that's going to make us happy. And that's what, that's what Christ, uh, and Christ says specifically that he came to give us joy and a perfect joy. And I came across something recently that, um, that kind of added a new dimension to this. And I want to share it with you today. I, I teach down at Central Catholic High School. And uh, thanks be to God, I gave my final last Friday, so I, haven't, I don't have to worry about that again until the end of August. But the, uh, um, and it, it, there was a teacher in service. So all the kids had off from school, but the teachers had to go in and uh, do a little conference. And one of the guidance counselors showed a video. And the video showed a, a researcher. It was the, a, a researcher, a female psychologist, was talking about the findings of her research. And she said that there's an intimate connection between happiness and thanksgiving, happiness and gratitude. And that's not terribly surprising. And, but, and she said that. She said, that's not terribly surprising that there's a connection. But people often think that grateful people are grateful because of their joy. In other words, they experience something that makes them joyful, and they're grateful for that. And she said that in the course of her research, it became clear that the causality actually goes the other way. That people are joyful uh, because of their gratitude. That joy comes from, from gratefulness and thanksgiving. And she said that in the course of her research, she found this consistently, that people who were joyful were also grateful. But more than just, you know, as we hear spoken of, you know, it, it wasn't just a matter of, an, as, as people say nowadays, an attitude of gratitude. It wasn't that. They, these people had rituals of gratitude, little customs. And one of the examples the researcher cited was that the, 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 the woman who reported being happy and joyful and all the rest of it, uh, at, she led her family in grace before meals. And in each instance of that, um, each person in the family took a turn saying something that he or she was grateful for. And, uh, and I, I, I was really kind of impressed by this. And I thought, I may, you know, maybe I need to do this more. And so now when I, at, at home, when I do chores, so for example, when I'm folding my laundry or cleaning my room or do, you know, doing whatever, I'll say out loud things that I'm grateful for. And I'll even challenge myself to say I'm grateful for things or people who challenge me, who, are, who, are, who I find uh, difficult to get along with. And I'm not going to name names, but they're, but they're out there somewhere. The, uh, uh, the, there's, and and it's, it's actually difficult. I find it difficult to kind of bring myself to say out loud, I am grateful for this person. Or in a difficult situation, I'll try to find something to say I'm grateful for it. And, um, and it's a powerful practice. And I just I throw that out there as a way to maybe encourage you to, uh, to, to think about ways you could adopt something like that. Or and, uh, like a practice, something that enacts gratitude. And something that you, where you challenge yourself to be grateful even for the difficult situations of life or the difficult people of life. And of course, this resonates powerfully 
with our own faith. That, and, and we might say that, that the greatest ritual of gratitude of all is the Mass. That the Mass is the celebration of the Lord's thanksgiving. The word Eucharist means thanksgiving. It's Jesus' thanksgiving. And it's Jesus' thanksgiving in the most difficult circumstance of his life. Or at least on the threshold of the most difficult circumstance of his life. All of the Eucharistic prayers that we say at Mass refer to the passion, but also to the praise and the thanksgiving that Christ gave in the face of his passion. On the night he was betrayed, he gave you thanks and praise. On the day he was to suffer and die, he took the bread, said the blessing, gave it to his disciples and said, you know, that that's the way the, Euch the Eucharistic prayers all go that way. The fourth Eucharistic prayer, which we don't say too often, is a little bit different. It says that he, having loved his own, he loved them to the end. He loved them and was grateful for them, even as they betrayed him, even as they let him down, even as he was to go to, the, to this, to the, again, the most difficult circumstance of his earthly life. We can see that the Lord came to give us a complete joy. And the way he braces us for that, the way he prepares us for that, is to give us a complete thanksgiving. A thanksgiving that's not attached to any worldly circumstance. Rather, it's focused on heaven and on grace. And so for that reason, is prepared to be enacted, prepared to be celebrated in even the most difficult circumstances of life, which can be horrible and traumatic and, all, you know, and, and even lethal, um, but which after all are are, are temporary. The Lord gives us uh, a spiritualized, fully transcendent gratitude that can be practiced um, in the company um, of any cross that might come our way.